Uh, first, though, we get a take on all of today's events. And joining us now is Arizona Congressman John Shattig. Congressman, thank you for being with us. All right. I want, I want to be very clear for our audience's sake and really spell out. We, we are going to see three votes tonight. The first vote is going to take place, and that is going to be on the Senate health care bill, which will take place, well, probably in about 15, 20 minutes from now, correct? That's right. Okay. The second vote is going to be a vote to recommit, the Republican motion to recommit. And that specifically is going to instruct them to add the stupac language to the bill. Now, this has taken on a little added significance uh, just in the last couple of hours or so, because if that happens, you know, everyone would be on record having voted against the stupac language. And this right. is prior to the actual reconciliation bill, which is the third vote. Explain the, the vote to recommit and what that would mean. Well, it's an attempt to get the alleged pro-life Democrats on record, give them a chance to put their money where their mouth is, say what they vote, how they actually told the American people they would vote. What Stupak got at the end of the day, unfortunately, is nothing. Uh, the executive order the president signed adds nothing to the bill. And unfortunately, many of us, or at least some of us, a few of us, saw this coming way back last November. Uh, the reality is we had a chance back then uh, to reveal whether or not these pro-life Democrats really were willing to engage in this fight. We didn't do it. Turns out that was a mistake. And we're now going to get this bill passed with the votes of Democrats who say they're pro-life. Uh, this will put uh, the test directly to them. All right. So we have, we have the first vote is going to be on the Senate bill. Second vote is on the motion to recommit. We'll put Democrats down voting specifically on the stupac language. The third vote tonight that we're going to see in the course of the program, and we're going to begin that really momentarily, uh, the first vote that is, uh, and, and we'll have it here for everybody live here. All right, now, when we get to the reconciliation, which is going to be the third vote, if you go right. back to earlier in the week, we had Kent Conrad saying that it's unlikely the Senate will be able to pass that bill unchanged from what the House passes. Now, there are some challenges that are developing tonight, specifically because of changes on the Social Security bill, which would be a violation of that act. Can you explain that to our audience? Well, uh, they put all kinds of things in this bill to get votes uh, to get it passed. They made promises that the Democrats would pass it exactly as it is. Uh, then, in fact, those Democrats who got sleaze into the bill uh, uh, are reneging on that. And it appears that they've even put language into the bill which would violate the Social Security Act. Uh, at the end of the day, this whole idea of trying to fix the Senate bill by passing a rec reconciliation bill with substantive repairs to the sleaze, uh, the backroom deals. You know, President Obama's, Obama promised us change we could believe in. And then we discovered that this bill, uh, the original Senate bill, had more pork more backroom deals, more sleaze than any legislation perhaps in American history, then we discover there's new backroom deals in the bill that just came out this week. It's that kind of conduct that makes the American people angry, and it's that kind of arrogance that your guests were just talking about where they say, look, the Congress doesn't care what the people think. They're going to pass it. The people be damned. And that, I think, is going to cause the Democrats serious trouble. I do not think the reconciliation bill will pass as it passes the House, and I think that those House Democrats who vote for the Democrat health care bill believing it will be fixed are going to wind up being tricked. All right. I, I want to go back to Bart Stupak, who played a very significant role, you know, up to the last minute when he had his press conference earlier today. I was watching Debbie uh, Wasserman Sh uh, Schultz, the congresswoman, and she basically, you know, explaining earlier, an executive order doesn't change the law of the land. So let, let's roll that tape for our audience. Well, it can't be changed by executive order because an executive order can't change the law. But what, what my understanding is that they're working out is that unequivocally, what, we're, what we've all been saying is the goal would be that we would not change the Hyde Amendment, not make sure that there was no federal funding provided for abortion. It seems like he got nothing, Stupak. Because this could be. He did get nothing. There's no question about it. Uh, if you want to check that, look at the fact that none of the pro-abortion members of Congress, those who say they're pro-choice, uh, are objecting to what he got. Uh, none of them are objecting to what is in the Senate bill. The high language is history. Uh, even if Mr. Stupak believes that this executive order means something, I, I'm happy he thinks that, the reality is the president in this country doesn't get to trump law. Law is passed by the Congress and then signed into law by the president. 
He can't, by executive order, undo what the House and the Senate pass and what becomes signed into law. And in this instance, uh, what Stupak got was hollow and empty. Every abortion expert, uh, I'm a, uh, I call myself a recovering lawyer, I can guarantee you uh, executive orders do not trump statute. Yeah, well, I, we, I can tell you that he, apparently there's a pro-life group, and it's interesting that the, the, the pro-life, pro-choice groups uh, are actually in agreement against this bill for, for, for different reasons, obviously. But, Congressman, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. My and pleasure. Glad to be with we you. are expecting.